Yes, he's here. I got some buddies joining me today, guys. You want to say hello? Hi. Hello. <laughs> Jesus, you guys aren't usually shy. Come on. No, well, I mean, you, you you call us into this mysterious video call without telling us anything, and then uh, you know, join me for a Zoom call this afternoon. What do you got? That's, that's actually par for the course for for freaking Danto, actually. Yeah, you know, it's all my fault. What can I say? Um, hey, listen, we are all going to be at Cedia, which is September first to third in Indianapolis, of all places. And no, 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 hang on, hang on. You two don't ever go to Cedia. I go to Cedia. Amy Nation goes to Cedia. Matt I've Scott. Been Cedia before. I've been to Cedia before. I was in, last time I was at Cedia, it was in Denver, and it was before Gummies. So I'm told it was a different show in Denver after Gummies, but let's not go there. Anyway, <laughs> since we're all going to be there, we're going to have a party. Um, Polly is going to be paying for half of a cocktail party. AV Nation yeah, is going to be paying for the other half of the cocktail party. It's on the first night of Cedia, 4 p.m. right on the show floor, September 1st. We don't know how you can sign up for it yet, but we do know you can sign up and register for Cedia. Cedia registration is open. Guys, ladies, this is going to be our chance to get together and shake hands and hug and celebrate being vaccinated and getting done with this stuff. First one ever, September 1st, for the whole nation to come. Can we, you know, back, can, we, can we take it back a few? I've never been to Cedia, so this is my first time actually interacting with the resi folks that are outside of the New York, New Jersey area. And you guys forget, man, it is an indie. It is in my turf. So you're going to Indiana, the home of Starin, where I uh, am employed. So guess what? This will be my first time venturing out of the uh, Chesterton area and into the Indianapolis area. And I get to hang out with you lovely folks. Well, uh, come to the party. Uh, you guys are throwing a party. That's great because nothing like free uh, booze and technology and, uh, you know, get to hang out with world famous people like uh, Dave Danto. So well, that's that's your, and, and and smart doorbells and, you know, TVs that come up out of the mattresses and, and all all of the wonderful technology that will be at Cedia. Uh, plus, you know, as, as David said, you know, it'll be a good chance for us to get together. Sounds good. Come join us. I dare you. Uh, you know, we are there because the residential market is being um, uh, compounded by the new home office market. You know, home sweet home office. This is why we're all here. We're all working from home now. Everybody you know for the last year and a half has been working from home. So we are now going to turn Cedia, in addition to being the residential show, into the work from home show. Yeah. Hmm. That's yeah. because of things like this that are around, all, all around us. So right? We all got sent home and uh, a lot of us weren't prepared. Who had a kitchen table for the first uh, month and a half of working from home thinking it was going to go back to the to, to way it was? And then all of a sudden you went into your office and then your office was just okay. Then you started ordering a chair and you ordered a new desk, right? Then you realized that you needed all this other stuff because it wasn't feeling quite right. Guess what, folks? It's been a year since we've been doing this. It's time that the residential folks get to see a little bit of what commercial can bring to the space. And on the same token, the commercial guys that are going to be at residential, you guys need to understand a little bit about aesthetics. Not everything is a gray box. Not everything is just a, a black speaker, right? It is uh, very, very different. And I think that both, both things are going to collide and there's going to be some positive stuff coming out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the one thing that Chris mentioned there is the fact that you, you've got you know, folks going home and, and staying home. There, there's, there's certainly is some folks going back to work, but a good majority are staying home and they're, they're wanting and needing that the, the commercial level uh, of AB gear. And so introducing that into the residential market is going to be absolutely huge. Yeah. I, I could not agree more, guys. That's absolutely what we want to do over here. We want to make a real cross-pollination, introduce everybody to everybody else. And, and, and really, you know, Make them understand that it's so much more than it looks at. It looks like from the surface the first time. I mean, not only are you going to be talking about the best design for the home office, but why do you need a home office? How do you set it up? What are, not just the technologies, but what are the physical realities about it? It's not always just for being on video calls. Look at the three of us. We're content creators. You know, we've got stuff going out on YouTube. We've got stuff going out live programming. You know, we, we all work for each other and do different things with each other. What if you want to be a content creator at home? It's not the same $99 webcam. We, you know, it's tools, not toys. How do you bring up the level of this stuff? So I think, you know, it's going to be an exciting show and it's going to be a party. So uh, I can't think of it. And, and it's free registration, which opened today as we're recording this. Today is uh, June 9th. So CDA registration is open. It's free. 
God, why, what's the reason not to come join us? You're afraid of flying to Indianapolis? Do we think we've got enough content there, or do we... Uh... So we need to do a less abrasive one, which is not the, hey, you're going to learn because we're going to be there. So let's... That ship has sailed. No, no it's sure not. Go. It's not sailed. It's not sailed. I think one of the things that you have to remind folks, right, in the same vein that I said, not just, you know, for, for AV people have to understand aesthetics. We're going to get a lesson in work from home and residential because... If there's commercial people going to a residential show, they get to see that. The only time we actually ever really get to see that is an ISC where you have a combination of both, where you see hand-blown speakers next to monster cabinet subwoofers that belong on a stage on a line array, right? What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is it, there's going to be a merging of the two uh, ideas, right? We're going to have to take what residential knows is, hey, go here and just get a webcam. And we have to bring the knowledge of, the side hustles that have turned into legit work from home businesses, right? A lot of people went home, the whole work from home lifestyle afforded people the ability to amp up their content creation. So maybe you were a cook, maybe you were doing kind of things in your wood shop, right? Maybe your garage was just a basic wood shop. Fast forward 18 months, that cook in the kitchen now needs PTZ cameras, right? Better microphones, better lighting, right? That's not something really the residential folks really understood or got because it was very rare that they dealt with cameras and microphones, speakers, brightness, contrast, that's all in their wheelhouse, the network, how to beef up a network, they're, they're fluent in that. But what we're talking about is side hustles that have turned into something, the home studio, right? How many commercial uh, manufacturers, not manufacturers, but commercial integrators have nightmares of crawling through pink, star, you know, pink, um, insulation and basements and crawl spaces because they're not used to doing that. There's no GC, there's no EC, there's no plans. It's, I'm not to, not to say that the residential guys don't follow that, but man, dude, there's, there's a fear on both ends to get involved in what we do. And this is the great kind of, you know, this is the, the, the this is the, this is the Switzerland, right? This is like neutral territory. We got to figure this out. We got to make it work. Right. So what? It's called Indianapolis. It's not called, you know, Switzerland, Bern or, whatever. you know, pick any 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 state or city state in whatever in Switzerland. But go ahead. Have fun. I think that this is going to in, be an enlightenment for a lot of people that are both going to go from both sides of the business. There's going to be a realization, a sudden realization that, hey, what we do finally is connecting. And the funny thing is, is when I post something on LinkedIn and say, hey, we're at an intersection. People are like, oh, we've been there. We've done that. Yeah, but not to this degree and not with the blessings of companies for the first time, right? So that's where we're at right now. And I think that that is going to be the uh, eye-opening experience to the to a show like CEDA. And I'm going to give you one more piece, Chris, is, is the fact that that for those commercial integrators um, that have been following this, this, this move, um, one aspect that, that they don't do or they don't have to do in the commercial side, and that's networking, right? Uh, the residential dealers are, are all, all of those things that you just said. In addition to that, they're network, mm -hmm. um, they're network uh, experts as well because they have to be, right? Yeah. You know, and, we, and we all know that AV travels on the network now. Nine times out of 10, if you're a, a residential dealer, you're a residential uh, integrator, you're doing the network as well. You're responsible for that. You're responsible for the Wi-Fi. You're responsible for the backbone. And so that's an aspect that they've had to learn and they've had to know uh, over the last five, 10 years that they can actually honestly uh, teach the commercial side a thing or two about, you know, not only proper um, deployment of a network, but also proper care and maintenance of a network. And we've also learned, though, that, that all of our um, assumptions around working from home in a business continuity sense were all completely wrong. It's something I like to call the flush test. You know, what if everybody goes home at the same time and flushes their toilets at the same time? Does all the plumbing explode? Yeah, everybody went home and tested that they could remotely connect into their office and do a video call when they weren't feeling well or when they had a, a commitment. But we never anticipated that everybody would be home at the same time, every employee of a company just about every employee of a company, and just about everybody in the household. So I'm working here in the basement for my office, which has been my home office for, you know, for nearly two decades. My wife is upstairs doing teletherapy, uh, using the camera that she's got set up in, the, uh, in, in, in our family room, and my kids are upstairs taking college courses. 
all at the same time. Did anybody ever anticipate needing all of that bandwidth? Did my company or the companies that we work for, did they ever anticipate all of their employees coming in at the same time? It's one of the reasons why the companies that were in the cloud moved faster. They were able to be more agile. They were able to grow faster. So you know, a lot of lessons here to learn. Um, and, and I think CD is going to be the opportunity for us to all get together, um, I- I enjoy the separate serendipity of the moment that we've that we're all finally coming out of this thing. And- it's so funny. You you keep referring to this as like a kumbaya moment. I think people are just dying to get back to business, man. I think it's going to be not going to be the hugs and, and, and pats on the back. I think it's going to be like, man, we're finally here. Let me see what you got. Right. 18 plus months we've been locked down. Right. We haven't seen or touched or played with anything new. Press release is a press release. Don't get me wrong. And I don't want to disrespect any manufacturer who has put out a product since then, since last uh, February or or whatever, uh, in the time that we've been in lockdown. But we haven't physically touched it. If you are an employee of a company that is an AV integration company, chances are if you're a salesperson, you sold something, it went to the site and you didn't even see it. You didn't see the box come into the warehouse. You didn't see it being assembled in a rack room. You saw none of that. Right. You may have gone at the very end if you were allowed to go see it finally placed in the room. But most likely you're going there now to see how the job was finished because you weren't allowed on site because it was only essential service yeah. or essential people that needed there. So I think that going back to a trade show, I, you know, you're talking about hugs and, and high fives. I think people are going to be walking through hollowed halls like, oh, my God, this is a place of of meeting people. We're in a convention center. Right. You're not in your you're not in your bedroom. You're not in your kitchen. You're not in the dining room. You're not meeting somebody at a coffee shop outside the coffee shop, standing a car's length away for them to have a conversation. I don't know about you guys, but I think that is what we're coming to in September. If it's truly the first time that a group of AV people that are of, you know, you know, in the U.S., let's put it that way, that are going to come together. So it'll be interesting to see how this works. And uh, I think just a lot of people walking through those, walking through those doors are going to be, you know, awestruck just by the fact that they're walking through doors that they haven't been able to in a very long time. So I, I won't romanticize the hugs and, and high fives, but I think that I just walking into a convention center is going to be all, you know, all inspiring enough for a lot of people. Let's summarize. Typically, you know, the, the red, residential um, AV show of the year, um, the first chance for people in the industry to get back together and see what's going on in person, actually network, mm-hmm. free registration, free cocktail party, the overlay of everything we're learning about the home office, content creators, and all the side hustles. Is there a reason not to be going to Indianapolis September 1st to 3rd? Can't think of one. No. I'll be there. If, you, if you're yeah. looking if you're looking for a, a, a trade show that's going to be kind of in the middle <laughs> it doesn't get any more in the middle than than, than tim's area of the midwest right you're, the host, Tim. you're, you're gonna welcome us all to your area your backyard I, I will welcome you all to the the fabulous midwest uh flyover country yes <laughs> but will um will av nation be producing content from the show absolutely 100 percent. but will av and the am be producing content from the show absolutely not it's, we do Sundays, dude. I'm sorry. Maybe before, maybe after. That's Wednesday. After. Come on, Danto. I, hey, come look, on, man. I grew up in Brooklyn. Wednesday is Sunday at Carvel. You know, I got that. So. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll bring you a fudgy the whale cake and make it all better. But outside, outside of the fact that it is a Sunday show that we cannot do during the week because I am, I, I want to, you know, I'm going there because I have a purpose in being there. Right? You guys hooked me up to have uh, be on a panel. So I got I got a reason to be there. It's not just me wandering around the the halls looking for Matt Scott and for for other people that I may know on the residential side of the business. I'm actually going there with a reason. So it'll be interesting to, uh, to 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 come across a lot of people that have been very active on Sundays. Don't get me wrong, a lot of residential folks do jump in on uh, on Sunday afternoon or Sunday mornings and talk. But it'll be nice to see them put a you know uh, a face to a name and outside of Matt Scott and. Uh, the guys from Time Homes, who I know are going to be there, and my buddy. Uh, oh God, so many! You know what? Now, now I have to start going and and, and listing people like Todd Puma and Todd Puma. guys from CE Pro, and and, and, and there's so many uh, that. As I'm long as you, as, 
as long as you mention it, I might as well say that we have an innovation hub and a smart stage that are going to be doing content from the show. And I can count on hopefully the two of you to moderate at least one session each to talk about, you know, some of those expert topics that we're talking about, cameras and audio and content creation and building a home office. We're going to be building an awesome show. All of that is free. Um, so please register and please join us there. My favorite part of Dave, uh, of Dave Danto talking about an innovation hub, as he sits in a that 70s, uh, you know, Stage show. Sixties. <laughs> With every gadget you can find from that '70s show or from uh, the Brady Bunch, I, I, you know, it, what a contrast that the guy who's going to be kind of Mr. Peabody up there, you know, running the wind <laughs> machine. He has a pong machine back there somewhere. I do, I do, and I also have a um, uh, pole position, the miniature pole position. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and, and when we're and when we're not talking, he's playing Gallico off to the side. We know, we we get it, we get it, we get it. But it's so funny that the innovation guy is talking about innovation sitting in a in a bunker somewhere in in parts unknown in North New Jersey. So yeah, I'm excited about an innovation hub. I'd love to see where those where the style clashes are going to happen. Right? You know, are we going to are we going to be talking solely UC in the AV pro AV space of commercial where it's you know, we talk huddle rooms. We're not talking huddle rooms at a residential show. We're not talking about auditoriums. We may do some like commercial conversation because we know that residential guys have been partaking in that, right? And like commercial is walking into, uh, you know, restaurants and bars and doing sound systems and they play around and sometimes do a lot of the digital signage stuff. Um, it'd and be these, interesting to see that. And these guys are some of the, some of the most prolific users of AV over IP. Absolutely. Especially in, in larger home installations where, you know, the, the argument about whether or not it belongs on my network or doesn't belong on my network. Yeah, it's, it's the home network it belongs on. And, and these guys and gals are the ones who've been using it um, a lot over the last four or five years. The AV integrators are going to need to pick up a whole bunch of new skills as well, because all the devices that we're talking about putting in homes now need to be, you know, and this is one of the Polly's lines, tools, not toys. It's enough of the $50, $60 webcams. Now I need to put in a device that, you know, uh, when, when my, my company's IT manager, when my company's collaboration manager looks at his pane of glass, he wants to see all the things on campus and all the things off campus too. He wants to make sure that, that, that the, the camera setup that I'm using today was actually paid for that's still plugged in and then it's updated, it's got the firmware and that I have the bandwidth to use it. So there's going to be a lot of cross-pollination of so knowledge going on. So a, a common thing that all three of us have, and this is bizarre, outside of maybe me and you, uh, David being in Jersey and me and Tim liking pizza, uh, one of the things that we actually all have in common is that we all came from the end user kind of the business. We spent some time on the end user side, either as a technology manager for corporate, for universities, for both, right? So we have a very different perspective. Like we were always told you got to, you know, from the integrator, Hey, you got to call your IT guy to come fix this. Right. Or you have to put in the IT trouble ticket because our, 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 our job ended at the, at the wall. Right. And we're talking to the guys now that are the trouble tickets. Not only are they the, the, the installers of the display, as we would call it, as opposed to a TV, they are doing the display and they got everything going right back to the DMARC. Right. So that is very, Interesting that, you know, there is one person who plays multiple roles where for us, it was all a trouble ticket to various different departments, even though the AV and IT are kind of all one, we still have to navigate those waters. And in this case, on a residential side, AV and IT have been mashed together. And it's always the same person anyway, because outside of that integrator, outside of the physical integrator who's there on site doing the job, your next call would be to the telephone company or to the cable provider, because that's it. There's nobody else. It's you and your and your your bag of tools and your bag of tricks. So, and, and I can assume nice. that that you're one of the three people in this conversation that is tech support at home. Um, Lord knows I am. Have we not all been tech support at home? I mean, I'm not not just from my home within the thirty mile radius. Now I don't go outside of my, I don't go outside of my county because for a while that was kind of a no no. But I did a lot of phone support at weird hours. And God, I mean, that's what we do. Not just on the, for for IT. But how many calls do you still get, David, about flashing 12s on a VCR is my question. Well, I have a butt set down here somewhere. I, don't know right now, but, but I, I am a four-wire guy, so I, I can go in and do all of that stuff. <laughs> I did fire up the emergency generator this week when JCP and L killed the power. So you know what? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm at home. Absolutely. 
Jack of all trades. You have the long. You have probably the deepest history in 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 our industry between the three of us. I mean, I'm. Oh yeah. I'm. Uh, you know, I came in during our. You know, during the RGB days and the coax days. But man, you go a little further back than that, and that's it. You know, to see how it's progressed is interesting because even thinking back to the way it was with homes, right? Now I was a Nintendo kid, right? So I grew up with the with the Nintendos back in the day. That would seem complicated back then to connect it to a TV. Because for me, I still had some of those old TVs that required that little that little F connector that split out into the into the into the RCA jacks. Uh, for people watching at home, that would be the red, yellow, uh, and uh, white jack that used to come out of the back of those. That that just really hurt my head. But but all right, never mind. Um, no, I, I get that, no problem. And uh, and yes, I do have quite a bit of background of experience. I can t take you back to the late nineteen seventies. When, AT when I was working at AT&T Corporate Television and they were doing network broadcasting to all of their sites and we would be doing a roll call because obviously they could be the only ones that could afford it because they could afford the lines, they owned them. Um, and we would be doing a roll call, you know, Boston, do you hear us? Great. Video, okay, great. California, do you hear us? Audio, video, great. And there would be that one city that came on and said, you know what, I see you, but your audio is low. Can you bump it up a little bit? And our answer would always be, yeah, no problem. We've just surveyed 40 cities and they're all fine. But because you don't want to get out of your chair and raise the volume on your TV, I'm going to raise the feed to the network. No problem. Um, so, yeah, that's now gone to a narrow casting that we all do at home. So if this was a Marvel TV show, this is where we would cue Tim to edit and de-age you and then put you in that spot like they did with like Ant-Man and Dr. Pym. Like, yes, man, this would be great to see you working in, a, in an AT&T lab with glowing packages. And the only one who would know what's in there is you. So yes, bring your 35 slide, you know. Okay, now uh, now exactly. you got me going on Amazon looking for Pym particles. <laughs> so we're going to add it to the, uh, add it to the background. Guys, Sorry, man, this is what you get when you watch a little Loki on the side. So thanks for I gotta it. watch it. I haven't had a chance yet. Thanks for Thumbs taking up. the time today. I'm gonna see you obviously before then, but I will see you in Indianapolis. Talk to your friends, register, come to the party, drink, share, learn, have fun. There's nothing bad about it. Indianapolis in September. I'm coming right from Vegas from a vacation, so you know I'm gonna be happy. Better than me. I'm gonna be coming from Jersey, where I haven't been for the last 18 months. Tim, where are you coming from? You're just driving. I'm driving. <laughs>